This is a world, a global humanitarian crisis. Militants lay siege to Iraq's largest oil refinery. Sunni extremists in Iraq occupy Hussein's chemical weapons facility. The end of Iraq. These aren't headlines from 2003, they're from the past 48 hours. 11 years after the U.S. and coalition forces invaded Iraq and promised to bring stability to the country, sectarian violence puts it all in jeopardy. In the southeast are the Shia Muslims, which have ties to Iran. In the northwest are the Sunnis, which have ties to Saudi Arabia. Further north are the Kurds, which have been pushing for an autonomous region along with Turkey's Kurdish population. Allahu Akbar. With the latest clashes, familiar questions are surfacing. Should the U.S. send troops? Are we on the verge of war? Were mistakes made? My heart is with my people there. But also a new question. Was it all in vain? Here in San Diego, several groups with very different experiences in Iraq are watching the developments with a mixture of terror and hope. This is, these aren't uh, isolated incidents. This is a consistent approach and systematic genocide. San Diego has tens of thousands of Iraqi refugees. They want satellite TV and scan their cell phones and computers for updates in case a loved one back home has tried to reach them. Most are Chaldeans, Iraqi Christians. They've been persecuted for centuries, and it's gotten worse in the past few decades. Now it will double with these people because these people are very, very strict and very terrorist. Their roots in Iraq are as old as the Christian religion. We are talking about thousands of years before Christ, at least 2,000 for Abraham. As they watch their country being torn apart by militant groups, their hearts are breaking too. And I feel very sad. The people are suffering, not the others, and especially our Christian. You know, they are persecuted a lot. What do we tell a little girl that lost her brother? For no reason. Yet many said military intervention is not the answer. It's time, they said, for the Iraqis to solve their own problems. Nathaniel Donnelly, an Iraqi veteran, also watches the news for developments. Donnelly served in the war's very first months. Obviously, I don't believe that we should go back in there and reinvade the place. Um, but if, if we do need to go in there, I think it would have to be uh, you know, small surgical teams, operators. Was it all in vain? Not for him. He fulfilled his personal mission to make it in and out alive and to fight to protect his Marine brothers. If we really try to do the right thing, then I don't think it's wasted. You know, I don't think the lives are wasted. We cannot let almost 5,000 of our sons and daughters, our soldiers, die in vain. Everything we've done since 2003 is being unraveled right before our eyes. We can't let that happen. Yet he too says hard power is not the answer. Both Chaldeans and war veterans found one meaning in the war's chaotic aftermath, education. How to invade, how to lead, how to build a government, how to pull out. In Iraq for everyone, when you have a state that's inclusive of everyone, that celebrates the differences, doesn't attack, good things will happen. And the best testament to that is the best country in the history of the world is America. Lessons that tragically came too late for Iraq.